Hey there viewers, welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Let's go this 2002 Ford Explorer Sport Track 4 liter 4 wheel drive here and it has come in with a customer complaint of the ABS light on. Uh, I did check it out yesterday, that's when I started working on it, getting back on it today. It did have a code for missing wheel speed signal in the right front, which I verified when I drove. It stays at zero miles per hour. Left front works, sort of, I'll show you that and the rear appears to work just fine. Uh, so naturally, I thought it was gonna be pretty cut and dry. did not intend to do a video on it. Uh, all we do is bring them in. They're a two-wire AC pulse generator you know, type sensor. Take them, plug them, see what, uh, what you have. Typically, these go open circuit or they get enough rust under them. They'll rust jack out and have a really low amplitude signal that you won't be able to see very well, or at least the ABS module can't interpret. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I found. I'm going to look at some data I collected on the scan tool and see what we can figure out. So we'll take a look at the uh, recorded data stream I captured uh, yesterday morning when I was driving this. What I want to pay most attention to is our three wheel speed signals here. Now the right front, that remains dead the entire time. The left front works and the rear wheel speed sensor works, but take and pay attention to the rear versus the front as far as when the left front actually starts working. So we'll see here, I'm on the brake. I think I'm pulled over because I started kind of noticing this. And you'll see here, we just start to take off, but we have no front speed signals until a smidge over three miles an hour. So just about four miles an hour. And then I drive it and you know every, everything works there. Right front's totally dead. So we'll kind of speed up here if we can. So now we're sitting stationary. And I go ahead and I take off real slow just because I wanted to see when this left front wheel speed signal was going to start working. And it's just about four miles an hour. So I know there's a lot of guys saying, well, you know, what's the big deal? Why is that important? The problem is obviously in the right front wheel. And yes, you're right. The problem is in the right front wheel in regards to the code. It has no wheel speed signal. So let's say, for example, we fix that and that, that wheel works fine. We don't do anything with this. We give it back to our customer. They're not going to be real happy. The ABS light's going to be off, but you're going to have unwanted ABS activation because this wheel speed signal does not register until, you know, three, four miles an hour. So every time you pull up to a stop sign, you're going to get that classic, you know, ABS pump kicking on and, you know, you slide ahead a little bit until you hit the cart in front of you or stop. So that's important to know as a shop owner standpoint. That way I can tell the customer, you know, everything that's wrong. Yes, we need to fix the you know, rust jacking or whatever's going on with this left front speed signal plus the problem over there. And we don't have to worry about you know, a comeback, customer complaining, well, you know, now the ABS kicks on, but my light's not on, and you know, that story. So moving forward here, I went and grabbed my Pico so we can see the wheel speed signals. Pretty cut and dry. I did unplug the wheel speed sensors. So this is the wire here that runs down to the individual hub. Like I say, they generate their own electricity. And then I also have this one here, so the wire comes up and around through all the salt and all the goodies. And then I have that end of it. The other end is right up there by the inner fender where it plugs in and goes up to the ABS module. I'm going to show you what I found. I found a little bit of an anomaly that I can't quite explain. All right, so what we'll do, we're going to look at the Pico here. I have it set up, uh, just both wires plugged in. As we spin the wheel, it should generate an AC sine wave. You know above and below zero volts or completely unplugged there should be no uh, DC voltage offset with it unplugged faster you spin it the higher the amplitude faster the frequency uh, you set it on a one volt scale generally spinning it by hand that should keep you within its range as far as getting a known good you know spin it as fast as you can by hand what's normal amplitude of the signal you just have to test them we're going to notice that these are are pretty low particularly testing uh, you know left front you kind of get a feel for it, how much voltage you actually make uh, So we'll take a look here at the Pico and here's what I'm talking about. So channel one, so that's our blue trace as you can see Is above the zero volt line Which is kind of odd. The sensor is completely unplugged. So I'm going to unplug it So it's unplugged. Of course, there's, there's quite a bit of noise there um, Let me unplug both sides here. Let's see if we can get that line a little bit steadier. So you can see our blue trace now is right at zero volts. I'll plug it back into this wheel speed sensor. And there it has a negative offset. Let me switch these leads around. 
in there, it has a positive offset. Now I got about a 60 kilohertz filter on this and I have a cut down on some noise. And this is the part that's baffling me is why do we have, why, why is that signal being pushed up? So the red trace uh, that you've seen there on the scope, that is our left front wheel speed. That's one that has no problem. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take and we're gonna spin these wheels. We're gonna look at it here on the scope. You know, give you guys an idea of what, you know, a known good looks like. Kind of get a general idea. Uh, let me shake and change our time basis here. We'll get put on a little longer time. That way we can spin both of them, have them both on the screen. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start with the left front. So this is the driver's side. Just spinning it by hand. Now come over here to the passenger side. Tried to spin it just as fast, but right, so we're gonna pause this. All right, so what we'll do is we'll kind of have a zoom in on these. And you can see, if you look across the screen, you look like right up here, every time it you know, kind of peeks out, that's when I grab the wheel and give her another little, little toot. So we can tell, let me just, uh, let's see how you turn off the channel. Let's go like this, get it out of our way. So we can see an AC sine wave being generated by spinning that wheel. So this is pretty typical. Got it up to about 108 millivolts. I think the amplitude's a little low, which doesn't surprise me because as you guys remember seeing on the scan data there that that left front wheel really wasn't kicking in, wasn't registering until about four miles an hour. So now we'll take a look at this blue trace We'll zoom in on this. Now this is our wheel that is not registering. You can see the voltage offset here about what? 40, 50 millivolts, somewhere in that vicinity. Well, when we start looking at it, it's generating an AC sine wave. It's just not starting at the zero volt line, which is kind of bizarre, has me a little bit confused. Because other than that, it looks as it should. Yes, there is some noise on it. So this is uh, this is kind of where I where I got yesterday, and I I got perplexed by it. I don't know why that is not acceptable. I would assume that the ABS module is you know AC coupled, so to speak. That it's only going to look at the AC portion of the waveform, irregardless if it gets pushed around by DC voltage, you know, to some sort of offset. And I can show you that on the scope. So we'll go back here on the scope. Uh, we'll run this live. And if we, if we AC couple our scope, let's uh, get our offset back to zero here. So if we AC couple it, that one is at zero. Where does that put us? That puts, that still has a slight bit of offset to it, doesn't it? A blue trace, yeah, about 30 millivolts, so I'm wrong in that regard. Oh, wait a minute, big dummy. The AC coupled the right waveform here. There we go, so I did the wrong one. So AC coupling both of them, you can see that the waveform on the scope there, it puts them at zero. I assume this is what the ABS module looks at. So if we go spin this wheel, let's spin this left front wheel. So we spin that. Go back here on the scope and have a look. We can see we are creating an AC signal. It is very low amplitude. However, even though that is a low amplitude signal, I would assume that once we hit, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour, that it would start to register on our scan tool, but it doesn't. But if we look at it with the DC aspect on there too, hopefully that makes sense. You know, it's offsetting the signal. So how is this ABS module interpreting it? So that led me to, you know, kind of scratch my head. If we compare them, if we AC couple the scope, we look at both signals spinning the wheel. They're both about the same amplitude you know, bottom line. And that's where I left off yesterday. 
So what I did is we know the left wheel speed signal works. So what we could do at this point is we could take our scope, we could go up to the module, make sure it's receiving this AC input. You know, is that AC input acceptable? Is there a broken wire issue? Easiest thing to do. We know this one works, so why don't we just jumper the wires from the left side over to the right side, spin it, see if we got scan data. And then we just have to assume whatever's, you know, screwing up our signal here is just something that the ABS module doesn't like. I don't know how it interprets data. So we'll just unplug our scope from this. I'm using some jumper leads out of my AES Wave U test kit. I've showed this before in tons of other videos. So it's this little guy. Link in the description. Handiest little bit of kit you can get if you're a scope user or just, you know, even on your multimeter. So tons of different styles of front probes, uh, wire piercers, you know, variable resistor, fuse uh, loop jumpers, all kinds of goodies in there. So if you're wondering what I'm using, it makes a job like this quite a bit easier. So we're just going to use essentially, you know, two jumper wires with banana jacks on them. We're going to take, plug one into that side, plug the other one here, and then I put the appropriate male pin terminals here, and we'll go over and plug it into the wiring harness that heads up to the ABS module. Theoretically, we should be able to spin this left front wheel, but with the key on, it should read data for the right front. Uh, keys on, left side is jumpered to the right side. So theoretically, when we spin this left wheel, if the wiring is good to the ABS module, this is the one, let's see, let me expand that up there for you. This is the one, uh, nope, not that one. Don't listen to me, folks. This is the one, expand that even one more time. Super enhanced, that's the right front wheel. I'm gonna spin the left side here. Well, that tells us a lot, doesn't it? So regardless whether you have a scope or not, that's a pretty simple little trick if you want to know the problem in the hub, or in the speed sensor rather, or is it in the ABS module, or wiring, something like that. If you don't want to bust out the scope or whatever, just jump her left side to right side, you don't have to do anything other than that. You know, plug it in, away you go. Uh, and then spin the wheel, naturally what we did. So if indeed we plug the right side back in and spin, spin it, then you're blue in the face, and never registers. But I don't know why, you know, is it that little bit of offset that it's seeing when it's plugged in? You know, I don't know. I don't have the answer. So I'm going to leave that up to you guys in the comment box below if you think you have the answer to that question. What I'll do is I'm going to take and hook our scope back up to the wheels. I will capture the signal again. I'll leave that file in the comment box below also so you can download that Pico file. Look at it for yourself. See what you think. If you don't have a Pico, it's no problem. You can download their software for free and use it. That's the beauty. That's what I love about Pico. Download your software. You can upload that file that I captured, and you have all the functions of their scope, just like I do. You can play with it. You don't even need a scope. So that's pretty cool. You can kind of familiarize yourself if you're thinking about purchasing one. So that's that. That's where I'm at. I spent too much time on it already. It's a 10-minute diagnosis. But that just bothers the snot out of me when I see something like that. So... Anyhow, time to get that wheel ripped off. What we'll do is we'll also gather some data from the new wheel speed sensors. This side, we're gonna see if we can't take that out, clean the rust out from under it, but just, I already told my customer, a lot of times you go take them out, they break. So I've bought or I've purchased two wheel speed sensors just in case. So oddly enough, when I just captured that waveform to say for you guys, there is no offset. And that was the thing that was kind of happening to me yesterday to the point where I thought I was having an issue with my scope. However, I would switch channels, switch leads, all kinds of stuff like that, and it always stayed, you know, regardless. But then I'd come back and it'd be gone. So I don't know, my scope's not plugged into the wall so there's no ground through, you know, everything here coming back, some kind of weird stuff happening there. It's not grounded to the vehicle. So it's just measuring the difference across those two wires. I, I don't know, man, I'm barking up the wrong tree. But when there is no offset on it and you spin the wheels, which is the file that I captured that's in the link below, you're gonna see that the AC sine wave out of this wheel versus that wheel is almost identical. Why doesn't the ABS module like it? I don't know. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take peel the wheels off, gonna get the brakes off, gonna get down to the speed sensors 
and have a look. Maybe we can learn a little something there. I assume we're just going to see a normal New York rusty turd under there. But I got to get motoring. Uh, What's up, garbage lady? Uh -huh. Hey, show everybody your sweet new shirt. See my sweet new shirt. Move that baby so we can see it. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Sweet. You should do a signature edition. Probably get 100 bucks for that thing. <laughs> We are down to the meat and potatoes now. So as you can see, all the goodness, AKA the white stuff, is all over the sensor. Does that mean anything? Salt is highly conductive. I don't know, but it's, you know, crusty. We know it's functioning, but not acceptable. So I'm gonna, I get to bust out some new tools. Look at them little guys. What? Got them off the Matt tool truck today. Mrs. Old Bottom for me. Right? Hey, babe? I wrote the check. Yeah, it's kind of like you buying them for me. Is that you bought it? Yeah, you bought it for me. Thanks. Every tool has a hammer side, remember that. Oh, you son of a monkey. Are they not Torx? They're probably not Torx. They're never Torx. They're Allen's. Good thing Mrs. O loves me, because I just bought these off the tool truck too. They're not, uh, I have used them a couple times. The Mac tool guy loves me, I know that. And the thing is, why do I, you would think I would already have Allen's, which I do. However, they're over on the other side, and the ones I had over here sucked. So, I got sick of walking over to get the other ones. Mother lover. Let me get a pick, see if I can dig this thing out. It should be an Allen. I think it's just pretty well round at this point. So what we'll do, we'll see if we can't beat a Torx bit in there. Something gets get some purchase on it anyways. What do we got here? T30. Nope, that's one that uh, it's already been there. So let's see if a 40 will fit an appropriate striking device now. That's gonna be a little too big. Son of a gun, we need like a 35. Let's see if we can get an Allen socket that fits a little bit snugger. Go for an Americana here. It's right at 7.30 seconds, and that gonna be close. Nope, still a little too big. We're gonna be in that in-betweener. Yeah, that's oh plan B. This is plan B easy outs. So we do have a plan C. We always have a torch if it comes down to it. Let's see if we can get one of these to bite. There we go. That should be about right. Get a socket. Yeah, I went out on a Mac tool truck and went bananas. See, when Hannah worked here, it wasn't that big a deal. I would say, hey Hannah, go get this. Now I got to do all the hoofing. So that worked. I don't know what this is going to do, but it always makes us feel better. I'm pretty sure it doesn't do anything because we give it about that long to do whatever it has to do. I'll be a son of a monkey. That kind of moved kind of easy. That does have one of those shims underneath it. No, no, don't throw that rim away. I've got the other three matchers. I was hoping they fit Hannah's car, but they didn't. I'd like to get it out of here without breaking it, but I don't think that's going to be possible. fingers. Oh, look at that. Look at me. I'm a winner. We don't want to get junk down in there. We can avoid it. So ain't that something. 
That actually came out. I can't believe it. These never come out. Let's see if there's any physical damage on it. Take a little spacer off. Any kind of cracks or fractures in it. Well, I don't see any. I don't know, you got me, fella. All I know is it doesn't work. Tons of rust jacking under it, as you can see. So I'm gonna take and plug the hole off. What works great to plug those is a valve stem cap. They fit down in the hole conveniently. Then you can clean all the garbage off. We know the sensor's not any good. Uh, I am going to replace this sensor. I'm not up for experimenting, putting it back in, pulling everything back apart, taking it back out, all that business. Because we've seen that this sensor has the same, you know, produces the same exact signal as the left side. So I don't know, you got me. Stick them right down in there and unthread them. And then that, then you got your retrieval tool when you're done. So you can just kind of push that down in there. Now you don't have to worry about all the junk. So dig all the rust away. Don't dig too much, you gotta leave something to put the speed sensor back into. And don't be surprised if when you take yours out, it breaks. 90% of the time they do. The file's starting to get plugged up and I have to go hit her on the wire wheel. So the thing is, you get a little rust around where the speed sensor goes in. So we gotta kinda scrape away at that a little bit. Makes putting the new one in a bit easier. And that's usually where they get hung up, is right above where the O-ring used to sit. I know you guys just wanna see the waveform for the new one. Be patient, or fast forward one or the other. you're using a blow nozzle and you blow this off and you shoot across it the venturi effect usually will rip that sucker right out of there but be careful it doesn't get you in your eyes safety third as you know let me grab the new speed sensor sons of monkeys didn't send a new bolt with it i know it was in the picture so i'm gonna put a little fluid film on there They always come with a new one. We want to make sure our depth is going to be okay. I don't know if we have to put the, sometimes aftermarket wheel bearings come with these spacers, sometimes they don't. Yep, so that's actually hitting. So this is uh, convenient. Well, doesn't that just suck up? You see the problem, or about an eighth inch longer. This perhaps is aftermarket. And that lady is a problem. Uh, oh, dang. So what do you do? Is this aftermarket or is this OEM? I don't know. The face of the hub says Moog. This is the Moog wheel bearing. So the freaking Chinese, they changed their wheel speed sensors and here you are. Oh crap, what do we do? Do we put it together and experiment? Shouldn't change anything, but at this point, we need to have, you know, either whatever speed sensor Moog uses, 
or a whole new hub because I bought OEM wheel speed sensors. I'm just going to stick this crappy screw back in it. Well, that sucks. Now, this side has a Moog wheel bearing in it that is relatively new. Uh, this one's pretty shiny. Obviously, so has a lot of the crusties on it. At least if we can learn something here. We will. I don't even know where I was going with that statement. So this one is definitely Allen. Or at least it's gonna be. Alright, let's see if this one wants to cooperate with us. Dang it all. This one was cooperative. We had such good luck with the other one. Let's hope this side goes the same. Good thing we didn't break it. We'd be putting a wheel bearing on it right now. Ooh, there we go. So this one's out. We'll just set that to the side for the time being. Find my valve cap. Snug fit. It's all back together, is what it is at this point. It's too late in the day for me to get a new hub uh, and get that taken care of. Of course, I got to talk to the customer first, so I don't know what we've run into, which always sucks. I hate making the second phone call. So we'll get our scope set up here, just recapture this data, you know, just because who knows if it starts working. Now we have something to look at. Uh, both of them are hooked up. The blue trace is going to be. The driver's side. So let's start by spinning this, have a look at the scope. So that's the driver's side. I'll start here with the passenger side. They're both are captures. Definitely a difference in the amplitude of the signal, that's for sure. So we'll take and pause this. Let's uh just zoom in here. So this is the driver side. Noticeable improvements there. We can see where our peak voltage is getting closer to 400 millivolts. So you did about half volt what you can spend by hand in my experience. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Passenger side is still lower, right? You've got them on the same time. Yeah, we've got them on the same scale. Um, where are we at here? About 230 millivolts. But again, just a nice looking AC sine wave. I will save this file too for you guys. I'll put this link, I'll make this one that, you know, the after the repair. Let's let it down, grab the scan tool, and see if scan data reads by any chance. I'll get you guys set up over here. Uh, let's see, let's, uh, we don't care. Well, yeah, I guess we do. No, we don't care about the rear, right? Simply because we're not going to compare that to the left for the time being. All right, so let's see where we're on the left side. Now the left side, remember, would not read below three miles an hour, so I'm just gonna take and spin this very slow. So cleaning the wheel speed sensor on this side obviously has made some improvements. So let's spin on that side by hand, and that winds down and can read below three miles an hour. So that is a legit repair. Let me go spin the right side, see if anything changed. And nothing has changed. Blows my mind. Unfortunately, we have to leave the video at this. Obviously, when we replace that wheel hub, which we'll do, unless I can find the speed sensor of the correct length, you know, I know what doesn't work, likely we'll just end up changing that hub out. So that is what it is. We also know that the wiring from there up is good. We know that sensor produces an AC sine wave. The ABS unit doesn't like it. I don't know why. We know that the signal, I mean, you guys can see it. I mean, if you've downloaded those files to look at, What's like an AC sine wave to me, 
whether it's on the DC scale and it has that little offset is goofing up the ABS module. I don't know that I don't know. I don't know what else to do other than replace the hub, which, you know, isn't, you know, it's not a huge deal. We jumpered the wire side to side. We know everything else is good. Why am I spending so much time on this? Well, it's just silly, silly things like this that I just want to know. I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't understand how the ABS unit processes the data that it receives obviously in some way which that equals no good so we'll leave it at that in the comment box below feel free to leave your thoughts or opinions on it um whatever you guys think be sure to look down there to get the pico software to download the files that we took in this video let me know what you think while you're down there click that subscribe button hit the notification bell find us where you can find us we're also on patreon if you love what we do and you want to support us and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it Thanks for watching.